My name is Michaela Wente, and this is my faith statement. My confirmation verse is Philippians 4, 6. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. This verse is important to me because it tells me not to worry. I am a worrier and an anxious person. Praying helps me reduce my stress. If any of you don't know, I have dyslexia. I struggled with reading for many years. I went to a learning center in Wilmer when I was in elementary. My dad drove me there for four days a week, and it was for two hours long. I did that for about six months. I also went there because I couldn't say my R's right. I wouldn't lift my tongue correctly when I said the word one. They taught me how to read better and how to speak correctly. Reading in front of people is one of the hardest things for me. I always get so nervous and I feel like I'm going to pass out or feel like I'm going to throw up. What helps me let my anxiety get, not let my anxiety get the best of me is that I can say I can do it and I pray to God to help me through it. I also have anxiety, and every night before something big that would happen the next day, like a dance competition or a cross-country meet, I wouldn't be able to sleep or know how to fall asleep. Every night before a big thing, I would always pray to God to help me calm down and get some sleep so I can be prepared and ready for the next day. I pray to God every night about things that I worry about and things that I am thankful for, for my family, my health, and everything that we get blessed with. My relationship with God, praying to God daily, going to church, being in agabis, going to retreats, and volunteering helps me feel closer to God. Praying daily helps me worry less and get through the day. Remember, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Hello everyone, my name is Regan Martinson. Over the past couple of years, I have learned and understood my faith with God. It took a while, but I got there. The verse I will be sharing today is 1 Peter verses 5-7. through 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. This verse is the most important one to me because if you know me, you know I have very bad anxiety and I have struggled with it for a long time. It's kept me from doing so many things, going out with friends, having a good night's sleep, even going to school. I wear this verse every day on my wrist because it reminds me that I'm not alone and I, nev and I never will be alone. God is always with me even if I don't notice it. He's there loving me, being there for me, knowing I can do the things that I don't think I can do. Anxiety is a very hard thing to deal with and it's hard when you're a teenager when you have school and sports and friends. I've learned that when anxiety can get so bad, what you need to do to hear yourself is pray. Pray to God and pray for God. He's there and he's listening to every word you say. It's hard to remember that sometimes, but he's there and he always will be because he loves us. My relationship with Christ is very important to me because being close with God and talking to him has made me realize that when I attempt to be close to God, he gives me divine wisdom. God's wisdom is in his word. I understand that Jesus, Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I understand that he sacrificed himself for me and that he and that had brought me closer to him. Not only did he die on the cross for me, but he did it for you. He did it for everyone, and that is what I have realized, that he, what he has done for me. The church and my commitment is important to my faith because the church connects me with God and society. It gives me a physical space to connect and draw closer to God and realize that there is something out there bigger than myself. Plus, entering a house of worship, I'm, I'm instantly elevated to a state where I'm, I am opening myself to God and trying to understand his message. I am making time for God and allowing him into my life by attending a place of worship. I can release all the negative, negativity and frustrating situations into, into learning opportunities. Not only am I going to church for myself and to be closer to God, but I am helping those around me. When I go to church, I can play a visual, visual role in assisting Christians to help others by providing what they need. It's a place I can go when I need help and knowing that I can trust anyone. Connecting faith with my daily life can be a struggle for me sometimes because school can get overwhelming and as well as sports, family, and friends. Some things I do in my daily life to connect my faith is I pray throughout the day. When I really need help, I ask God. It's the first thing my mind thinks of is ask God to help me. Sometimes I'll be in science and I'll be praying that I didn't fail my science test. 
Sometimes before I go to bed, I'll read the Bible to calm me down after a hard day, and if I didn't pray, I'll read the Bible to feel connected with God that day. Going to church is a big one for me, even though I really dread waking up early to go to church. I do it so I can connect with God, and it makes my day feel complete after going to church. It's like I did something really good and grateful in life. The biggest one for me is love. Love is so important to me because I love so many people in my life. Without faith, it's almost impossible to love one another and achieve the goals you want to achieve. Faith produces an enormous power for greater purposes. The more faith I put in God, the more I allow God to direct my life. The more power and blessing I'm going to have. I believe there is one God, and he created the heavens and the earth. He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Hi, my name is Caitlin Sather, and this is my faith statement. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Lamentations 3.25-26 through 26. Almost everywhere I look, it seems like people are just rushing to get things done. We just seem to forget how to really enjoy the life God has given us. We take this world for granted, and it's only hurting ourselves. For our faith statement, we were asked what our relationship with God is. This question took a while for me to answer because I think my relationship with God has changed from when I was younger. I no longer say the bedtime prayers like I used to when I was little. Now I talk to God. I ask him to continue to watch over me and my family and to continue to guide me on the path that he has planned for me. I know that my relationship with God will continue to change as I get older. No matter where I go, I know God will come with me. When I go to church, I like how it gives us a break from the everyday rush I tend to see. We're just able to slow down and properly collect our thoughts. I really enjoy the calm atmosphere there is, even when there aren't that many people. I feel closer to God when I'm in a nice, quiet place that has little to no distractions. So in March, when everything came to a halt, I was okay. I was disappointed that the musical got canceled but I think it gave everyone that chance to slow down and think. In this crazy world, I believe we need to continue to slow down and enjoy the quiet that God gives us. We need to look for the beauty and the good. I believe that God gives us, is giving us hints on how we are supposed to act in these difficult times. I believe that God has plans for us and he will guide us to those paths if we take time to see his hints and feel his presence. There are times that I get frustrated not knowing what his plans are for me, but I know I, but I don't have to know yet. I just need to be as patient with God and his plans as he is with me every day. I like the quiet and the stillness. It is in those moments that I can stop, think, and feel God's presence. People have said good things come to those who wait. Well, I believe I also think then in that waiting, we need to look to God and to continue on the path he has for us. Faith statement. Pray more, worry less. Matthews uh, 6, 34. This is what I do to get through my rough days. My name is Isaac Conover, and this is my faith statement. One time, I didn't think I was going to do so well during a cross-country meet, so I got on my knees and prayed. I got first. All right. God is, very pow God is a very powerful thing. I believe he is the Holy Spirit and the Father of uh, Jesus Christ, is the Son of God and our Savior. I trust God to forgive all our sins when we show him our faith. Corinthians 16, 13, 14. Be watchful, stand firm in your faith, act like men, be strong, let all that you do be in love. I believe this means watch what you say, have strong beliefs, and stay true to God and be strong. I also believe that God intends for us to stay true in our faith and love one another and, and help each other. Show others what it is to be kind and giving. Uh, to be a Christian, I believe that God died on the cross to save us from our sins. I believe that you have to believe that you're a Christian. No one else can tell you 
uh, that you are or not. It is up to my faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right. All right, my Christian role model is my godfather, Matt Cordes. He's always saying PTL, praise the Lord, especially when someone makes him bacon. Matt and my dad, Jason, first met in 2001 during a New London Spicer boys basketball game where they were both part of a coaching staff. Matt loves his family, working with his hands, being outdoors, and fishing. One of my first memories with Matt was at the Boundary Waters, where he taught us Conover boys about the ins and outs of getting a tow out. Camping on the North Minnesota and his fishing secrets, Matt Cordes was a minister, or a youth minister, for 15 years and spent uh, the last six as a pastor in Fargo. Matt does acts of kindness such as building an orphanage in Jamaica, homes for refugees in Texas, and feeding the homeless in the Twin Cities. He inspires me to be a faithful Christian, and one day I hope to be like him and give back to those who need help, perhaps as a fishing guide. All right. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. The Lord will provide you with what you need in time and prayer. Like when the beginning of summer, I wasn't catching any fish. I was getting frustrated, so me and my friend Holt took my small boat out on the Lack of Pearl River. We were both doing some walleye trolling with small grapplers. When all of a sudden we started catching one after the other and the next thing we knew, we limited out. It just takes patience and a little bit of faith and you will be rewarded in time. Thank you for listening. Hi, my name is Matthew Jordan Martinson, and this is my faith statement. My parents are Nathan and Jesse Martinson. They've been a big part of teaching me about my Christian faith. I was baptized when I was a baby and went to Sunday school and release time. I learned prayers, the Catholic and Lutheran ones, and I received my first communion when I was eight. When I was little, I knew Jesus was the Son of God and that he would love me no matter what. I knew there was a heaven and a hell and that we all get to go to heaven because of Jesus. When I was in eighth grade, John Wagner became my confirmation mentor. We would meet usually once a month and talk about faith and what it means. Oh my gosh. I didn't know Lutheran was a tough word. When I was in eighth grade, John Wagner became my confirmation mentor. We would meet usually once a month and talk about faith and what it means being Lutheran. I learned a lot from John about using my faith and what I've learned about following Jesus in my everyday life. I'm thankful to have John in my life and as a role model. In ninth grade, I joined the Agape Singers. My first year was cut short because of COVID, but when we could meet, I learned about Jesus' love for me and the power of praising him through music with my friends. I was born in 2004, the same year my Uncle Jordy died. I never got to meet him, but I am lucky because I was named after him. My family said it's really fitting because I look like him, and they say I act like him too a lot of the time. Usually that's a good thing, but sometimes that gets me in trouble. The Bible verse John 3.16 was on his gravestone. It says, God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. This is the verse I chose for my confirmation verse. Growing up, this verse taught me that we all get to go to heaven because we believe in Jesus. I like knowing that I will get to meet Jordy one day. I have also thought about this verse this year. Things have been weird without having school or sports or getting to see my friends very much, even though it has been very nice to spend so much extra time with my family. Even though this year has been kind of hard, this verse reminds me that God really does love us enough to let his son die for us. Knowing he loves us that much makes me think that things will get better and believing in him will help me get through anything. I haven't been on a Agape tour or any church mission trips yet, but I've gotten to help with serving others during service Sunday projects, trick or treat for the food shelf, church events, and the community Thanksgiving meal. These things are my favorite part about sharing my faith. I like to help others and see what God can do through me and my friends to reach other people. One thing I learned during this pandemic 
is that the church isn't really just a building. The church to me is just anywhere people get together in Jesus' name. I believe in God. I believe in his son, Jesus Christ. I believe Jesus died on the cross to save us. I believe in the Holy Trinity, and I believe that one day we will all be together in heaven. Thank you. I'm Ethan Herselm, and this is my faith statement. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. The greatest gift of God gave any of us is love. Every single time love has come through for all of us, it never fails. This verse is important to me because everyone needs love in their life, and without love you may become lost. It is hard for me to really explain my relationship with God and my church as I am still young and trying to figure it all out. I do not know that God does show his love for me in many ways, even if I do not see it or realize it at the time. I know that he is listening to my prayers and worries and genuinely wants to help me. He wants me to conquer my, any problems I may have, and with doing so, I will grow in faith. I go to church with my family to keep my faith alive and keep learning about God to grow as a person and to have my own faith grow within me. I have not any life-altering moments to make me think either way about my faith. I have, however, seen the act of love and how powerful it can be. Someone I look up to is my great-grandma. She was a person that had so much faith, hope, and love in, all, in God and all people. She and my parents have shown me how to live no matter what. You just need to put your faith and hope and love in God's hands, and he will guide you the best he can, along with having your church and family right there. With you through my life, I know that I can and I may not go to church as much as one should, but still listen and talk with God in my own way, and I still believe in God and everything that he has done for me. Have you ever noticed that we are divided? Well, I have. Our world is divided into countries, or countries into states, and states into cities, and cities into even smaller sections. As far back as our could show, we have had wars and campaigns against each other, but we also have alliances and enemies. In today's world, it is hard to see the love that people have towards each other outside of our family. I know that it may seem hard for some, myself included, but not to judge, but show others that I love them. However, I know that God and my church will always be there for me when I ask for help or guidance. Love to me can come in many forms. It can be some big gesture, gift, a simple touch, a look, or just having someone say, I love you. When you, ha when you have love, you also gain hope and faith. My commitment to my church is to be there when they call for help, to volunteer when I'm able, and to be there for those who need a little guidance in their own faith, or just to be there for someone in need. Doing this important to me because I am helping those in need and also help myself grow more in my faith. With God and have hope in any small act of kindness will bring others faith, hope, and love towards God and others. God made us all in his own image, just the way he likes us, and we are all made with a special gift. I do not know what mine is yet, but I do know that I have a purpose, and God will guide me along the way with his love for me.